So I gave my fiance free reign to look through my entire fragrance collection and pick out 10 of her favorite summer fragrances that she likes to smell on me. Now, like I said, I didn't put any limitations on this. It could be designer, it could be niche, it could be cheap, expensive, new release, old release, whatever. Whatever she likes to smell of, she could put in the video. Now she did really request no order for this one here, so we're just gonna run through this just kind of at a random order, but she really does like all of these. And oftentimes, if I'm requested to wear something during the summertime, it's gonna be out of this list right here. I will link all these fragrances that we talk about down below to discounters so you can get these at a price that is below retail in really all these instances here. You could save yourself a lot of money by using those links. And we're gonna get this one kicked off with kind of an OG, uh, something that she's liked for a really long time, I guess it is. It's Prada Carbon. Uh, you guys already know the drill with this one. It's got metallic notes, coal, lavender, pepper, and broxen, right? A heavy dose of that. Um, it's Sauvage, but it's more so Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Think Sauvage EDT as a square and Prada Carbon as a circle, right? Very, very simple analogy here, but all I'm trying to get at is this is Sauvage, but with the corners rounded off. Everything is more smooth, everything is, is more approachable overall. And in a lot of instances, I think for a lot of people, Carbon is just more pleasant. You know, it doesn't have that super, super screechy, but also peppery and sharp opening uh, that even carries through the entirety of the scent like Sauvage Eau de Toilette does. So more so Sauvage EDP, just more smooth, more refined. Um, you can go back several years on this channel and she's always been kind of requesting this one and talking about it and liking it. So that's Prada Carbon. Next up, another one that was a hit pretty much right off the bat for both of us, it was Aqua de Jo Profondo. So we've got orange, sea notes, mineral notes, all of that good stuff. Uh, I mean, this one was launched, and of course I picked it up right off the bat initially, just because it's what I do here on the channel, especially for something like this, right? I was super pumped up to try this one out. And as soon as I put my nose on it for the first time, I was instantly hooked. I'm like, this is it right here. And the same thing happened with my fiance. When she tried this one for the first time, she's like, okay, like they're onto something here. And again, at this point, um, she's been on the same road that I have. Pretty much everything I get in, she smells at some point. And so her nose is also developing along with mine. And so to kind of share that experience together, and a lot of times we're on the same page with stuff now because uh, her taste is kind of starting to form towards mine as well. And Profondo has always been one that's just worked out great for both of us. It's a good performer for a summer scent. Quality is great. And above all, it's very unique. Now this one has been no stranger to the channel lately. It's Armoth Hunter Intense Eau de Parfum. So you guys have heard my stories with this one. Uh, it's been doing really, really well. And it's only like a $24 fragrance. Last time I checked on FragranceNet, 24 bucks on clearance for 100 mil. And again, we're talking the Eau de Parfum concentration. If you're wondering how this one smells, well, think of it as a mashup of few of the big popular blue fragrances and like Invictus Aqua 2016 or Rosasi Havas and then you've got Aqua Atlantique, Dylan Blue Sauvage. It's kind of a mashup of all of that stuff there. So depending on what you're into that either sounds like an absolute nightmare and you would want to run in the opposite direction or that may sound good. It just depends on what you're into. For myself and for uh, my fiance as well, it's one that we both really like. Admittedly, you know, I'll be uh, straightforward and say I love this stuff. I actually really do. I put this one off for a really, really long time. Um, more so, I guess, the EDT because that was out first. And I don't know why. It's always been cheap. I just kind of thought, eh, I don't need it. And from firsthand experience, I can tell you I wish I would have gotten this sooner. And you'll probably feel the same way once you eventually pick this one up and realize like it's actually pretty solid if you're into this sort of thing, of course. Especially at this price point, you can't go wrong. So this is gonna be one of the two niche fragrances in this video. Um, when I had this one come in and I tried it for the first time, it's Parfums de Marley Greenly, and uh, Lexi smelled it, and she was blown away initially right off the bat. I was a little bit surprised. Not because I think this is a bad scent, first of all, we'll get that out of the way. I, I really like this one. Um, not because I think it's challenging, but I don't know. It's a little bit different, right? Very green, uses of course a green apple, a lot of oak moss in here, um, musk, good amount of citruses. So I mean, it's not too far out there, 
But when I think of fragrances, you know, that are going to be generally very mass pleasing right off the bat, from Parfums to Marley, I would think of something like Sedley or Percival over this one. That's just me. But also, this one's been working really well. I don't know, there's something about it. I think it is kind of that oak moss, the green facets of this one, all of the citrus and the musk that kind of all of a sudden place it in a little bit of a different category, but in a way where it's like a breath of fresh air. You know, someone smells this, it's not 100% traditional and typical of what they're used to smelling. And so it's a little bit of a change. And I think for that reason, it sets this one up to be a great compliment getter. And it also works great in spring and summertime. Very, very nice stuff. Has a nice twist. I mean, smelling it up in the air, you get this kind of cooling green, uh, unique smell. I believe there's a good amount of geranium in here as well. Very aromatic in the mid. Uh, it's one that exceeded my expectations. I wasn't the biggest fan of it initially, but once I got my bottle in, I finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to get a bottle of it. And I started wearing it from the bottle and, and testing it more. That's when I was like, okay, this is way better than I thought it was initially. So pretty cool. Uh, I definitely had a change of heart on this one. Another one that uh, she has been a fan of for years at this point pretty much and uh it's also one of my first fragrances ever it's versace man oh fresh star fruit musk uh you know grapefruit citrus all of that stuff you guys know the drill uh still to this day a scent that i smell and go wow like that is that's good <laughs> you know i mean this is something that captivated me when i first got it and even now i'm like that is just pleasant it's a feel-good scent it's one that just puts myself in a good mood. I'm sure it puts a lot of other people in just a relaxed, nice mood as well. It's a people pleaser. It's pleasant. It is so hard to go wrong with. I mean, this is a fragrance where you could even overspray it in the dead of summer, and I still don't really think you would offend people. I mean, yeah, it might get a little bit annoying, but I really don't think that you could seriously tick some people off by overspraying this one, where if you were to go into something like a, an Invictus Aqua 2016 DNA and you were to overspray it in a setting where people are closed, that may annoy some people. But I mean, this is so likable that who cares? And a lot of people would say that this one is overdone by now. And you know, sure, I guess it could be. Uh, but at the end of the day, it still smells great. I'm still a big fan of it. My fiance is still a big fan of it, obviously, because she's placing it in this video. It was actually one of the first that she put on this list. So I think that's that definitely speaks for something here. This next one, I cannot find my bottle anywhere, and it's driving me nuts. Uh, she put this in the list before everything down here got rearranged. You know, all my bottles I had to take off the shelves and box up and put away. And um, so I don't know where this bottle ended up now. So that's kind of annoying, but it's Bottega Veneta Illusion something along those lines. Bitter orange, cedar wood, lemon, and fir, uh, vetiver as well, I believe. This one shocked me. Uh, I really liked it initially, but I didn't think Lexi would like it all that much off the initial spray, you know, when she first smelled it, just because it's not typically something I think she would go for. Um, it's something that I typically would like, kind of mixing, you know, citrus with some aromatic notes, maybe more of a traditional feel, uh, but she liked it right off the bat and it shocked me. And um, it was one where I got it in and we had already had the idea to start putting this video together. And she's like, all right, I know I want this one to be in there for sure. And this was at this point, probably the better part of going on maybe two months ago, we started kind of putting this together. Uh, so that was, that was pretty cool. It's a fragrance that's different. Okay, if you want something a little bit out of the ordinary, check out this one here. It's really, really nice stuff. Um, just a nice different take. If you're tired of the same old stuff, if our moth hunter intense and the like is just too boring for you now, check out Bottega Veneta Lugio. Next, we have a newer release. It's a Polo Blue Parfum. So I was for sure happy that this one got placed in here. And no, I wasn't influencing her in any way. Again, this was just her smelling stuff and then picking what she liked. Uh, but of course, after she picked it, I'm like, I'm glad that you put that in and I'm impressed because I think she could also tell just that it was good. I mean, of course it's good, but I mean, it's not just polo blue, right? When you get into the dry down, it really gets so much better. And for the, you know, I mean, it's something where you just have to get through it. You have to test it 
because off the opening, it smells like Polo Blue. Like where I just sprayed it right now, Polo Blue, right? Maybe not so exciting, but the dry down is where it's at. It almost warms up a little bit. Um, you get some aromatics coming through strong, some, some hints of spices in here. The dry down is where it's at. It's a true parfum. It behaves like one. Really nice performance, wears great on the skin, not too loud, not too strong, but also not too weak or anything like that. Quality is nice, and it really has become kind of one of my favorite flankers out of the entire line. Impressive new release. I'm a big fan of the Parfums. Starting to run down to the end, we have Mont Blanc Explorer. So she's always been a fan of Creed Aventus smells, right? Anything from the original uh, Aventus Cologne. Um, but she also really likes Explorer a lot, and sometimes she prefers Explorer over Aventus itself. And I can kind of see why. Explore is kind of lighter overall. You know, Aventus, I think some people could think that Aventus is a little bit too rich or a little bit too strong, especially in the summertime, because you gotta think, you're getting a ton of fruits and citrus, everything from the pineapple, the bergamot, the apple, the black currant, all of that stuff. You get all of that up top, and then a bunch of like oak moss and birch and musk and ambergris right to a heavy extent there's a lot of notes it's very high impact and i think it can be a little bit over the top for some people explore is much more flat and i don't necessarily mean that in a bad way or like i'm trying to insult it but it really is when you put this up against aventus or even some of the other clones out there explore is more flat it's easier to pull off it's more likable i would say in some instances it's lighter it's just uh super easy i mean just about everybody will like this stuff here for sure. Great in the summertime and uh, for the price, usually $40, $45, maybe pushing 50 for 100 mils. You really cannot go wrong here. All right, running down to the end, uh, the last niche fragrance I placed in this one, and it was no surprise for me. Uh, I believe this was also one of the first ones that she picked up and decided to place in here, and I knew it was gonna be in here, and again, I'm happy about it. It's Elysium by Roja Parfums. Uh, so this is another one where you can go look at the history of this on my channel. It's been a favorite of mine and hers for a long, long time. I love Alicia, man. It's got grapefruit, lemon, bergamot, vetiver, black currant, uh, ambergris, a whole bunch of other woods. I mean, there's so much. If you look at the note breakdown on this, it's massive, right? And again, we're talking Parfum Cologne here. It's the one she picked out. I, she also likes the Parfum version for what it's worth, but this is much more affordable. Um, and it's great, great stuff. It's a big people pleaser. It's a good performer on my skin. A lot of people seem to think that they only get four hours out of it. Maybe some people do, but I've consistently gotten seven, eight hours out of this one across several different bottles from different years, different batches. Uh, it's always been a good performer on my skin. And in summertime, it is absolutely delicious. Last up for this video, another one that uh, I was super happy to see get placed in here. And one that did shock me a little bit as well. It's going to be Italian Love by Dolce and Gabbana, um, light blue, of course. Now, this one was also placed in here when we started this, again, going on a couple months ago, um, and it was a lot more readily available uh, at that time. Um, now, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get sometimes. There was just a sale on it. It's gonna pop up again, so uh, if you can't get this one right now at the time of you watching this and you really want it, if you can get light blue forever, you could go that direction as well. Um, now, the difference is, though, that light blue Italian love has more bergamot in addition to that grapefruit, and it kind of tames the grapefruit note. If the grapefruit in forever is just way too overbearing for you, um, but you like it, but it's just, if you wish it was toned back a little bit, get Italian love, that'll solve your problem. If you just weren't a fan of forever at all, uh, like in any way, then you're probably not gonna like Italian love that much. Now, forever is also an eau de parfum. It's got the higher concentration there. Um, either of them are, are a great pickup in my opinion. Both are really, really good. Um, but I do think my fiance prefers this one just because of that bergamot support along with the grapefruit. I'm a big fan of this DNA, I love both versions. It's one of my, couple of my favorite releases, uh, period, within the past couple years, forever, and this one. Well, at least when we're talking summer releases, I think they're that good. Super unique, and I know I can't get enough of them. And also, 
apparently my fiance can't either because she placed this one out of everything in my entire collection. I thought that was pretty cool. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. Uh, top 10 summer fragrances for 2022 chosen by my fiance. So this was kind of, uh, we did this one in spring and you guys seemed to like it and so we decided to bring it back. It's been in the works for a couple months so she's had plenty of time to pick and choose and change things around so um, this is the finalized list and I think it turned out really good. Links to these will be down below. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.